you know you're entirely wrong about this. Your own newspaper posted a headline that said, the O'Reilly Trump interviews are the best Trump interviews. <laughs> Did you miss that? Did you miss it? No. I, my criticism is um, really that um, you actually are in the spin zone. Um, it's presented as a news program or a pseudo news program. And instead, it's a lot of parroting what Trump is saying to you. Give me uh, um, one example of how I parroted Donald Trump. Sure. You've attacked the moderators in the other debates, calling how, how them the fixes in. Yeah, Martha Raddatz and Anderson Cooper. You've also, well, for wait, example, wait, wait. How, taken how up... How did I attack Mr. Cooper and Ms. Raddatz? You said the fix was in. Um, I have a whole list, actually, the here. Fix, um, perhaps I can go through them all. The fix um, was in how? The fix was in that they were going to be hostile to Mr. Trump. I said they, uh, were, I said they were Democrats, all right? Yes, which also isn't not? true. Actually, the only Democrat was Chris Wallace. No. Ms. Raddatz and Mr. Cooper are Democrats. You did not know that? Right. No, the, the one who is the registered Democrat is Chris Wallace. So what are Ms. Raddatz and Mr. Cooper? They'll have to ask for themselves. I but did. see, I mean, see what you're doing, Democrats. Bill, is you're taking up the argument of the candidate rather than acting as an independent person. Mm, that's not Once true. Again, if, if I see that two Democrats are sitting there, both who have been um, aggressive with Donald Trump, all right, and then you have a candidate, Hillary Clinton, that's three against one, all right? And to my, in my analysis, and I do what you do, I have a right to, to say that may be not the fairest position. Right. It's a question of whether it's balanced. And unfortunately, over time, and like I said, I have a really long list of them, um, essentially you've kept up what the Trump campaign has been saying. You've made excuses for the locker up comment. You've pleaded with Ted Cruz I, that he's wait, really wait, wait, an wait. honest when, man. When did, I, when did I make excuses for lock her up? What, what did I exactly oh, say? Oh, um, let's see. Um, that would have been on... Uh, let's see if I have the date exactly. It would have been on... Lock her up would have been on... In April and also in August. And in we, August, yeah. uh, in, rather in October, if you remember, Charles Krautheimer came on and had a very vigorous well, what, argument. Wait a minute, what did I just, say about in April and August? What exactly did I say? Right. Well, we can go through all of them. No, um, I want that one. Which one in particular? April or August. Okay. Um, let's see. In August, um, let's see. Um, we had comments that you were going to... You would, if somebody is being really dishonest, referring to the press corps, you'd strip them of their credentials as well. Doesn't sound like an independent okay, that, thing. That, that doesn't have anything to do with lock them up. You are ill prepared for this interview, Miss Rubin. No, I'm you, not. I have a whole list here, Miss Rubin. Um, I have just given you a minute where you've hemmed and hawed. You said yes, I said okay. I, you said I justified a comment. Lock her up. You can't point to it, and then you pivot to something else. Yes, you're you ill have. prepared for this. And no, this is the it's point not I want to make. Bill. This is the it's point I want to make. Your column and blog are fraud. <laughs> We have been tough on Trump here, and I'm going to roll some tape. No, it's not. Oh, yeah? You play this little montage Listen to for this. all your guests. Listen it, it shows the three this. things that roll you said mean about him. Are you worried that sometimes when you say these things that peaceful Muslims will be the victim of backlash? Yeah. You're behind with women. Are you going to target... I'm not sure I believe it. Well, I, you know, whether you believe it I'm or not, sure that's what the polling says. Yes. Do you think your birther position has hurt you among African Americans? And are you getting mad at guys like me when I ask you the negative questions? Well, I know. Yeah, me? Yeah. Why, yeah, I think Why would become, I do that? I don't know. Who knows? I, you'll have to ask your psychiatrist. All right. So, Bertha, uh, covered there. Right. Um, October, October 10th, you defend uh, Trump's promise to put Hillary in jail. October... Well, well uh, tell me how see. I did that, madam. You just can't throw out, what did I say? You said that it was a perfectly defensible position. You can go to your own. No, clips. I didn't. That's not true. I didn't say yes, it was a perfectly did. defensible. You, read I had an it. Read, with read my Kahnheimer. comments. Do you have my comments there? Read them. I, I don't have them word for word, You're but I have the date. And I'll, you know what I'll do, Bill? I'll put them up at my website. You, and go people ahead. Can judge and you know themselves. how many people are going to come to your website? Zero. Because you're not an honest analysis person. Well, you just you're don't not. like what I'm you're saying, not. Bill. You're not. I actually have all the incidents Read, yeah, here. I know. There was the can't... time that Charles Krautheimer came on the show, and he had to really castigate you for saying um, you, you were using weaselly words, he said, to okay. defend Trump's violence. You know what the difference you have is gone between down the Krautheimer channel. and I? You've gone down we're and called for Judge Curiel to be uh, withdrawn that, from that the case. That's racism. 
Yeah, I know. I'm a racist. You're right, Ms. Rubin. No, you, the you comment know, was champ. racist, and you indulged you're real, Trump. You're a real star, a real champ. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. You say the Arizona law is wrong. Is that correct? Yes, I think it's absolutely racist that they're um, telling the illegal aliens that they can't come into Arizona. They can do what they want to. I mean, we're America. This, we have to have open... Wait, 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 wait. You're saying too many things at once. They're saying what? That we need you're to have... You're say wait, 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 wait ma'am. Are you aware of the fact that a country has borders? Are you aware of that? I'm saying that we need to get rid of our borders so we can welcome all forms and walks of life. You, of course, you're pulling my leg. I'm serious. Just look at how your ancestors got here. Well, they didn't come here illegally. Maybe yours did. How did yours get here? Did they come here illegally? I don't know, but they got over here somehow, and now well, I'm apparently they they uh, they they pooled from the lowest level of the gene pool for women from where you came from. That you don't even know how a nation is defined. How many people do you think this country could sustain with open borders? Is there a limit, an upper limit in your mind? I think we could sustain so many people because there's. Capitalism. I said how many? How many people are in America today? How many millions? Six hundred million. Oh my God. Oh, boy, we're in trouble, aren't we? So you, you just guessed at that, I could see, because that's not the correct number. Well, okay, we'll, we'll give you another chance. How many people do you think the United States of America could sustain if we had no borders and anybody could just enter the country? How many people? We need to put, we need to put limits on people's income because people are making way too much money. and they need to. So in other words, it's not the number of people here, it's the amount of money people are making. Yes, it's the greed in America. We need to spread I that see. Out. How much money do you make a year, Joe? Nothing. Right now I'm on a welfare check. But that doesn't matter anymore. Ah, you're on a welfare check. That's why you're so bene uh, benevolent with other people's money. So you're telling men like me who work for a living, who pay your welfare check, that I should be limited in how much I make so you can make more money doing nothing? Well, I think that you don't pay my welfare check. I think Obama pays my welfare check. <laughs> And I wait, wait, what do you mean? Obama pays it out of his pocket. Where does Obama get the money from, Joe? I don't know his stash. I don't know where he gets it. But the main thing is... What do you mean you don't know where he gets it from? It's called the public treasury. Where does the money come from into the public treasury, Joe? Illegal aliens <laughs> who work for a living and then they pass the money to the government. Joe, you're a very sick person. I really, I really pity you, Joe. And you never should have been able to get on the show because... A man wants to find hell as a place where there is no reason. And you just dragged me into hell. Welcome to Hannity. Now, for years, Democrats all across the country have accused conservatives of waging a war on women. Tonight, we have news for these liberals. There is a real war being waged against women, but it's not in America, and it's not by conservatives. Now, in this war, women are tortured. They're treated as second-class citizens, unjustly imprisoned, and they are even killed. Now, of course, I'm talking about the deplorable treatment of women in Islamic theocracies. Now, my next guest is an activist from Saudi Arabia and has been on the front lines of this war for many, many years, even starting a right-to-drive campaign for Saudi women, where she filmed herself driving a car within Saudi Arabia, and that move, of course, that got her arrested and thrown in jail. Joining us now via Skype is the brave woman behind that video, women's rights activist Manal Al-Sharif is with us. Manal, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Clinton, we have a presidential campaign going on, and from... The kingdom of Saudi Arabia, she took anywhere between 10 and $25 million. She says she's a champion of women's rights. She's never spoken out about the treatment of women in this country that her foundation has taken tens of millions of dollars from. I want you to explain to our audience why you went about this effort and what happened when you were caught driving. Uh, this happened in 2011, actually, and the campaign is still going on. But it's just a, a part of a big, bigger movement for women's rights in my country. And I think the women's rights is all over the world, not only in Saudi Arabia. It's an issue. Uh, you find it in the U.S., you find it in Europe, and, of course, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Now, I understand women also, you don't have the right to wear any clothes that you want as a woman in Saudi Arabia. Is that true? Yes, we have to wear abaya, the black abaya, in public. Yeah. So in other words, you must cover in public. No, not anymore. It used to be like that. Okay. But now more and more you see girls that not covering their face and they're okay. 
What about the morality police? Can you explain that women in Saudi Arabia, as I understand it, are not allowed to leave their home uh, if they're not accompanied by a male relative? Is that true? No, not true. <laughs> This is, this is a typical stereotype, I would say, about Saudi Arabia. Women can't leave the, the house without a man. Um, it's, the problem is in the court. Uh, the problem is at work that she needs a, min, uh, a man permission or the legal guardian permission but, to do these things. Right, but so not you need a man's permission to do it. But you also have the morality police. There's a group of police officers. For example, if you wanted to meet a young man in a park and have ice cream together, that can't happen, can it? No, no. So these things, are, uh, it's also more of the very conservative society. Even the society itself wouldn't allow this. But yeah. a morality police uh, is, is set there to set the rules, to, to make sure that everyone is following the, the Islamic uh, uh, teaching in public. If you have the choice to wear whatever you want, drive whatever, whenever you want, leave your house whenever you want, uh, love whoever you want, whatever, that, that is personal freedom. Sounds to me yes. that you don't have the freedom yes. that American women have, and the choice is you, don't, you can't even drive a car. That's the point. You can't drive a car. So the point. That is absurd to me. So the point me. is comparing the Saudi woman to the American woman. I don't see this as a point. Uh, American women shouldn't be compared to anyone because the, the history is different, the culture is different, the language is different, everything is different. So you cannot compare. It's, it's really like comparing. It's not. I would say apple to apple, apples to apples. It's, this is a really, um, I would say, wrong comparison. And if the American woman would look at people, uh, oh, she's wearing a abaya or she's not driving a car and looking at that like, oh, I'm more privileged, I'm, I'm lucky, I, I'm sorry, I, I disagree with that. I don't think it's lucky, um, I, don't think, I think it's called freedom. America's free, you do not have the freedom that American women have. If freedom is wearing a bikini, I don't want that. Well, but but <laughs> but, the, but, but, but hang you. up. But the freedom is you don't have to. The freedom is, but you can. So, In Saudi Arabia, you cannot. In Saudi Arabia, you cannot drive. Yes, and that that thing is changing. I'm not right. saying that women in Saudi Arabia are not so trying not to free. change their faith. That's the point. It's oppressive. It is oppressive for women. And I'm not trying to argue. I know that you grew up uh, in a different culture than, than what we have here. But if you had the freedom, I, the fundamental core value of America is freedom of expression, so, freedom of speech, me, freedom of religion. Have, there are no Christian churches that are allowed to be built in Saudi Arabia. There are no Jewish synagogues. Gays and lesbians, as you sure. said, must, must do it, but in a, in a, in a closet somewhere. Uh, they can't come out publicly. Women can't drive. It's, and I think, m in many ways, in my opinion, and I say this respectfully, you don't, you don't have the freedom that women in America have, and I feel bad for you. No, I really find it offensive that you say these things, because if you talk about gay marriage, until the 70s, it was thrown out in the, in the U U.S. society, and the U.S. society is very conservative. You still have the racism, you still have all these, um, the Native yeah. Americans, they don't have the rights until today. Women still don't have equal pay okay. with Okay, listen, when you get to drive a car on your own, and you get to make choices on your own, then we can talk. But listen, yes, I understand, I understand what you've grown up with. I, I, I have to run now, but I did enjoy our conversation. Okay, go ahead. And I wish you okay. best. God bless. Thank you very much. Appreciate but it. Encourage government to get bigger. That's one way to do it. Make college really expensive and then forgive the debt if you work for Uncle Sam. Sorry. All right, let's get to the details of what really they're asking for here. Uh, Kelly Mullen, a million uh, student march national event organizer. Kelly, good to have you. Keely, I'm sorry. Is it Keely or Kelly? That's okay. Uh, it's Keeley. I apologize. Uh, so what do you totally want fine. here? What do you want? Um, well, so the movement, the Million Student March, um, is a movement for a more um, equitable and fair system of education as opposed to um, the really corporate model that we have right now. Uh, so the three core demands of the National Day of Action are free public college, a cancellation of student debt, and a $15 an hour minimum wage um, for people who work on the campus. And how's that going to be paid? Um, great question. Uh, I mean, you know, so I'm not sure if you're talking on like a national level or at particular schools. I can sort of touch on both. Um, at well, my if you university, wanted all that University, stuff, University, someone asked to pick up the tab. Who would that be? 
um, the one percent of people in society that are hoarding um, the wealth and really sort of causing um, a catastrophe that students are facing. I mean, we have a, a relationship right now where one percent of the population owns more wealth than the ninety-nine percent combined. All right. So um, the one percent, Kelly, if the one percent. Mm -hmm. just had their taxes raised a few years ago back to almost 40 percent then to pay for the health care yeah. law they had them raised another few percentage points then they had their deductions right. limited to raise another couple points where depending on the state or locality they're, they're, they're pushing over about 40, 50 percent in taxes how much higher do you think how mm -hmm. much more do you think they should pay um, I think enough until we have a system where not one in two American families are uh, threatened with poverty. So where I do they that, go? Let's um, say if you tax them, they're smart folks, these people, this, this, these one percent hoarders, right? So if they leave here, yeah. then who's going to pay for all this stuff that you want? If they leave? The country. Oh, um, I mean, there's always going to be a, a one percent in the U.S. Uh, the U.S. is like the bastion of um, of capitalism and its success. And I think. Do you that, think the one percent um, can pay for all of this? Absolutely. Uh, Eighty-five people in the world hold more wealth than half of the global population. No, wait a minute. I mean, no, wait, wait, wait. Are, massive... we are we talking about eighty-five billionaires, or are you extending this to the one percent? or whomever who earn a little bit north of $250,000. At what level, Keely, do you start saying you got to pay a hell of a lot more than you're paying now in taxes? I mean, I think people earning, um, certainly people earning over a million dollars a year uh, should be contributing to How the much? wellness of society. If it's 50% now, let's say it's around 50% with taxes. We used to have a top rate of 90%. You think we should get back to that? Um, I mean, I think that eventually we will get back to that. I think and eventually. You're okay with that? Um, are, are some of your friends okay with that? Do some of them want to be successful themselves, and they'd be happy when they get to a level, maybe over two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, they start paying ninety percent of taxes on that? They'll be happy with that? Abs absolutely. I mean, I think that. Keely, people, come on! You're um, talking to me here. Your friends are going to be happy getting to a point in their career when they can look outside and say, "Finally, I'm able to pay ninety percent in taxes." Obviously, um, you know, people in, in your position, you know, don't want to pay 90 percent uh, um, in I taxes. I dare say, unless you're high as a kite, you <laughs> wouldn't volunteer to pay 90 percent, right? <laughs> I mean, unless you really did see a considerable bang yeah. for the buck and it was worth it, right? But a lot of the times that you realize it's not worth it, and given some of the track records we've seen with government, mm -hmm. it doesn't always work, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But the reality is, is we have to look at at the injustice of the system as it exists right now. Then do, I mean, you, do you think you know, maybe it, if everyone paid a little bit more for this, would you pay a little bit more for this, besides the rich, that to pay for that it's worth it? That do you think these are, are but good goals? People already are paying for no, this. No, no, yeah. I asked but, it but differently. Working... I asked you, would you, Keely, and your friends, and your mom, and your dad, and your family, would mm -hmm. they happily pay more yeah. to provide all of these benefits you just outlined? Of course, and we already are. Um, no, I mean, no, 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 no. You I'm just graduating. said to pay for some of the things you wanted, the rich should pay significantly more than they're paying right now. Now you're telling me. Yeah, that's exactly you... what I'm saying. Okay, Everyone's okay, already but, paying. Uh, well, they're not. I mean, now you're saying for the added, these added benefits that you want, and they're fine benefits, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. you, you think mm -hmm. your friends, their parents, your parents, your family would be happy to pay a little bit more to provide these guarantees and benefits? I come from an incredibly working class family, um, and my family is already on numerous forms of, of government assistance and is basically scraping by, you know, in order to get me through college. Um, I, I live in a world and I, and I see a system around me where there's a population that's doing nothing to contribute um, to the progression of society. Education is really the only way that we have innovation, that but we Kelly, have, I'm sure um, you're, you know. You sound very smart. You know what's going on. You mentioned what's going on in the world. You're probably aware of what's happening in Greece yeah. and these other countries that provided mm -hmm. all these benefits and then some, many of which you outlined very nicely here for us today. And they're going broke yeah. and they're out of money. And they're, they're, they, they don't know what to do. And their people are riding on the streets because they can't believe the money's gone. And the benefits and the promises yeah. are gone. Right. What do you think? Um, I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's a, like a global catastrophe right now of, um, 
complete like defunding of social services and because they ran out of, of money. Of public, you know of, what happened, Keely? They just ran out of money. Yeah. Right? I understand, but there is a 1% in Greece, there's a 1% in the United States, there's a 1%, there's a ruling class in absolutely every... I don't doubt there um, is, Kelly. You know, I don't doubt there is, but obviously yeah, they've so been trying to tap the and get money from and they realize either they don't have the money or they hid from the money, or they're gone. They're gone. Yeah, and now these countries yeah, so are going those bust. those people need to be accountable. All right, fine, these, but they're people, smart and they're, they're, they're scaring the all over the globe. So now, now even yeah, if you... Yeah, they are, and that's a problem. All right, but they, they've done studies on this, kid. I don't want to get boring here. But even if you were to take the 1% mm -hmm. and take all of their money, tax it 100%, do you know that couldn't keep Medicare, just Medicare in this country going for three years? Did you know that? If we're to a point where the rich is paying 100% on their taxes, then we're on the road to socialism, and we're going to have a completely different um, type of public infrastructure. No, no, what I told uh, you, what I told you is that... Even if you took all the money from the rich who you say are getting away with murder, and you took it all away, mm -hmm. it wouldn't support one entitlement in this country for three years. I don't, I, yeah, I don't believe that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just don't, that sounds completely ludicrous to me. Do you I know mean, that how are... much it will cost to ma mandate a $15 minimum wage across the country, to have every one student le loan debt paid off, to pay for public college, for everyone, How much? you have a rough idea on the cost of just the educational part, on the student loan part and the public well, college. Yeah, part. absolutely. One one point one point three trillion dollars in student debt. That's just a beginning, um, and then billions. Do you and know millions how much you get fully in... taxing the one percent? One hundred percent. Um, I don't know. Is it close to the number, the it's about sixteen trillion, trillion dollars it's about that trillion. we spent to bail out no, the no, banks? No, hear what I'm saying because I just want this to be a math reminder. One trillion, yeah. which would barely keep Medicare going for three years. That's one area. Even mm -hmm. if we repositioned it to go into this area that you want, we don't have enough mm -hmm. to do it. So you're going to have to find other means of getting money, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's a starting point. I mean, I think that all of these things uh, require really comprehensive programs. No doubt, no um, doubt. But do you yeah, fear, no Keila? I guess it, what I'm asking I think you... That, yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. You're passionate about this, and I admire that passion and your involvement in this, but I think you have to step yeah. back and look at the numbers that could be involved here, because they're going to be huge. Right. And a lot of those, a college behind you and institutions behind you, knowing that student debt is taken care of, it's forgiven and done, do you think mm -hmm. any of those guys, any of those administrators, any of those schools aren't going to leap at the opportunity to gouge even more, to raise tuitions even more, to raise room and board even more? Well, I mean, ideally, if we have a big enough mass movement of people in the streets, um, we can actually prevent things like that from happening. I mean, that's one of the purposes. All right. We'll see. We just saw, sorry, I apologize for that, but history suggests that doesn't always happen. Uh, Dagan, Connell, what do you think? I think the math doesn't add up, and I think that as a broad message, it's like more for nothing.